Hello, I'm Colleen Yates, and welcome to another episode of our show um, with RDA Perth. I'm the CEO, and today we've got a wonderful guest. We're going to be talking with uh, Masood Ashbar uh, with Magellan Power. So what a show that was. Uh, well, we hear about Tesla, but what surprised me, Masood, was you actually doing this before Tesla in a little old place, Perth, Western Australia. What challenges does a remote place like our town have, or does it have benefits for inventive companies like yourselves? It does have both. It has challenges because we are not exposed to what other companies are exposed to. We are not exposed to funding like they are. We, we are not center of attention. Uh, so that's, these are the challenges. Uh, however, the, 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 the good thing about being in Western Australia is that we have access to all, the, all that knowledge that exists in at least four universities that, that are here. So we have identified that. And we are working very close with them. They've got some brilliant people. Uh, and, uh, and, and we just give them really good projects. They, 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 they do all the research, which we don't have a lot of time for. Um, we, uh, we actually lead those uh, researches, but they do all the hard work, which, uh, which is good for us. And, uh, and uh, the, the good thing is it's very satisfying because once they do come up with, with something and we commercialize them, we will employ those, those guys and, and, and that's another uh, feather to our cap and, uh, and, and it's, it's very sustainable. It's absolutely fantastic. Colleen, I know with RDA Perth you work closer with universities. Do you find that Perth universities do tend to have that culture? They want to be actively involved in industry and contribute? Um, I think it's it's definitely changing in that direction. The world's changing. And so uh, universities have got to take that research and knowledge and commercialize it. And I think um, it, you know by working with industry, uh, that is the best way to do it. So we've uh, we've done quite well in terms of our mining sector. We've taken a lot of technologies and have, have applied it um, to oil <coughs> and gas. Um, uh, to LNG, uh, to, to some of our mining operations. But I think it's really, really exciting what we're doing now in the renewable space. And I think um, Western Australia has an opportunity to actually lead the world um, because we've, we've got the resources, we've, we've got the wind, we've got the sun. But not only that, we've got um, the minerals in the ground. So uh, our crust is 5 billion years old. And all those... Um, rare earths, all those minerals are sitting there. And so we have a huge opportunity to combine that with what we already know in mining and move things into the renewable space. And I think we can lead the world. I found it interesting, Masood, listening to you when you were talking about the technologies or the uh, intelligence of batteries. I think there's quite a few of us lay people, we just go, well, it's a battery. That's but right. But you talked about data logging and this intelligence in the batteries yes. there. Yes. What is this about? How does a battery take it to that next level? Well, th this is, uh, I suppose, um, the world had to wait until the electronic technology and battery technology had advanced enough for this, uh, for, for the storage to be useful. Um, there is a uh, a typical battery these days is not just a, a, a cell with, 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 with two terminals. It has a lot of electronics in there. It is a very efficient battery. It's uh, lithium I'm talking about. In that same thing applies to, to other batteries, but we're talking about lithium at the moment. Lithium is a very efficient uh, battery. So if there is any difference between the cells, it is going to actually cause problem with um, uh, imbalance between the, the cells once you put them in series. So uh, you need electronics to detect these differences and compensate for them. So there's quite a bit of electronics there. Then you want to know how the batteries are, 
are um, charging and discharging at what sort of temperature and at what sort of depth of discharge and all of this now you need a lot of monitoring and data logging for that as well and then the battery by itself is very intelligent it needs to give that uh, that all of uh, that information to to something which is other parts of the, the system which are inverters and, and control system microgrids and and so on and therefore it has to be very good at communicating so so this is now the the, the communication side of the battery What's interesting listening to you, Masood, is, is this communication, this data gathering, this, this knowledge, this intellectual yeah. knowledge. And with RDA, you're embarking, we have drones in the same thing, people are just taking pictures and video of drones, but RDA has recognised that that is also knowledge and data that can be collected and stored. <coughs> and since this data and, and this knowledge is just becoming the forefront of everything we do, it is, and um, it's actually uh, uh, RDA Perth is looking at establishing uh, an export hub in this space, so uh, bringing together the drones, the batteries, um, defense industries, um, because yeah, that, data is a, one of those things that, that is really important. And um, as we found with drones, you know, the collection of, the storage of, but more importantly, the dissemination of, which is where the real value is, because people want to know about that information, and the more that they know about the batteries, um, the more the the technologies can, can improve. You know, so it's it's you know being able to have a um, device uh, actually tell you what's yes. happening is is like you know being able to talk to the inanimate object. <laughs> you know, and and, and make improvements. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, find out where the stressors are. So yeah, I think it's really. I'm just so excited about it. It's, and it's with the batteries and the drones, you know, we see some of the, the hobby drones, we start to get into some of the larger drones, we see university developing drones because of battery technology now and the information, mm -hmm. and they can start bringing the drones into agriculture for spraying crops and pesticides. Yep. And crops. Is this where this data, not only from the logging of the actual grid patterns that these drones are flying, but the data from the batteries are allowing the expansion of these drones to be bigger and better and, and serve us more? Bigger and better or smaller and more efficient, mm -hmm. okay? Because uh, the thing with drones currently is that you launch a drone and it lasts maybe about, or on, on average, about um, half an hour. And then you've got to bring it back down and you've got to charge the battery up to release it. So um, by understanding how these batteries function, by collecting the data from the batteries, um, we will be able to then possibly incorporate solar technology onto the drones or uh, wind technology to actually allow the drones um, to uh, uh, go much longer and much further. And then, but also bring the drones down into a smaller, oftentimes we joke about having uh, something called a pocket drone. So you're out, you know, enjoying your holiday, you find yourself lost and you pull out your pocket drone, throw <laughs> it into the air, it goes and gets you help and brings you right back. But the technology that's required to make that Seven happen. Seven out of a job. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's yeah. nearly there. It's nearly there. Nearly there. It's interesting hearing you talk about that. And there are airplane companies like Sinus that are using batteries to power aircraft, light yes. aircraft at this yes. stage. Uh, it, how far do you think these batteries can take us? You know, like in payload. We see like two seater aircraft now powered by battery. Yeah. Can it get further? Yes, um, it can. Batteries are, are becoming more and more efficient all the time. So the batteries of, of, uh, of today is actually a lot more efficient than the batteries of five years ago, right? So the batteries of five, in five years' time may actually be half the size of the batteries that, uh, that are today and, and so on. So we are actually in front of a, 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 a very steep evolution or, or near revolution in, in the storage. Wow, it's absolutely incredible, isn't it? You were saying that um, in the storage there, and I, I remember when you were talking with Colleen and the storage, and these residential packs, mm -hmm. it's almost like you've made it modular, and just plug and play almost. Yes, they, they are plug and play in that um, uh, the, you in a, in, in a normal house, you have a certain load. You're not going to exceed that load because you have your washing machines and your fridge and, and so on. So it's, it's, it's a certain load. <coughs> However, so 
you, you could you and that load is fed by the inverter which is inside the, the what you call the, what we call the battery the what we call the battery is actually the battery and the inverter inverter is what uh, what uh, makes the the battery uh, produce the right type of uh, power so then you could actually in a, in a modular way add more batteries right so and collect more power from solar and 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 store it in into those batteries and use them how you want to use them wow that's incredible you know you, you said something as well when you're making a module and obviously investment needing to expand we can say about expanding into africa and that's kind of going overseas is that also a financial challenge for a West Australian-based company like yourself? Well, it is. I mean, I, I would say what is limiting us more than anything else. As, as I said, the knowledge is there, the know-how is there. Um, uh, we, we, the infrastructure is there. To actually take advantage of, as I called it, uh, this tsunami of application, and this one trillion dollar worth of business in the next 10 years or so, uh, then yes, investment. That's what would make it happen because there is billions of dollars worth of um, home storage that is, uh, that is required, billions of dollars worth of uh, commercial, industrial scale, almost billions of dollars uh, worth of um, standalone power systems for all over the world for, for the applications uh, and also absolutely billions of dollars for utility scale energy storage so that's where the trillion comes from <laughs> <laughs> billions and billions oh, I know. It's, it's, a, it's crazy numbers but but up till now as I said we've been able to produce power but we've never been able to store it. So this is another revolution. It's a revolution. Uh, Colleen, this must be exciting for RDA Perth. I mean, is this one of the reasons why you talk to people to get them the exposure so people can actually see the investment <coughs> opportunities and the growth opportunities coming into Perth? Uh, yes, to, to see those things, but also to understand um, you know, how quickly the future is changing and how disruptive the technologies are. And for the first time, Western Australia can get on the front foot and be a leader in this space. We have done so many great things in the past, um, but we've never been really good at, at, at you know, shouting out about the things that we do. You know, Wi-Fi, there's a whole bunch of things that have, that have come from Australia, and in particular Western Australia. So I think we're, we're coming of age. Um, we're sitting on uh, the edge of the Indo-Pacific region, which is going to be an economic powerhouse into the future. And so we have a role to play, and I think these technologies have an even bigger role to play in that space. So um, for, from RDA's perspective, the more that we can bring attention to the wonderful companies that we have here, the work the universities are doing, and the importance of WA, we are there. Wow. So, Colleen, I really appreciate you staying back after Sean having a having another little chat. That was absolutely fantastic. <laughs> Thank you very Thank much. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you, you for the opportunity.